Welcome to Anthropology by the Wire 2013, the third iteration of the National Science Foundation funded research experience for undergraduates located at Towson University. By harnessing the power of visual anthropology and social media, Anthropology by the Wire seeks to accurately represent specific communities in Baltimore, a city that has become extremely divided. As once strong and tight-knit communities begin to fade due to gentrification efforts and deindustrialization, it is important to remember that their stories are worth just as much as those from the people often in roles of power. Therein lies the goal of this project, to document and archive the voices of those less heard and misrepresented in the public image. The rate of HIV in Baltimore City is around 2.5%, while in some zip codes it's as high as 5%. HIV is a virus that infects the body, it destroys the, the immunity system and uh, allows the person's body to be infected by any other disease that comes in and people will die if they are not under care. In order to learn more about living in Baltimore with HIV, we collaborated with select individuals from the JOCS Initiative, a department in the Institute of Human Virology from the University of Maryland. In addition, we participated in City Uprising, a day of citywide free HIV testing. Every year we do this um, program where we come out into the community. It allows us to come out and um, get outside the doors of JOCS Initiative and approach the neighborhood in high infected areas. And this zip is one of them, 21217 is a high uh, has a high prevalence for HIV, so we do this program and um, we come out and test everyone that's come through the door. Uh, I think it's important just because Baltimore is a city that has a lot of problems, it's known for that. I mean, I was, when I was coming from North Carolina and said I was going to move to Baltimore, they were like, oh, that's, that's a rough you know, place. It has that reputation. Um, and it's, lar it's probably undeserved because I think that Baltimore does have this strong community aspect that uh, you can get everybody out to help the community, and everyone is pitching in um, to combat problems that affect this community very much, like HIV and AIDS. It is important that people get to know their status, because once you know your status, then you can take care of yourself, and it helps the community. Getting tested, getting people into care provides prevention as well. You know, instead of it spreading all over the place with people, by people not knowing their status. If people know their status, they can be able to get in treatment and get take care of themselves. Care is medicine, mental health, social health, um, support. As part of our research, each team was paired with a member of Jocks who guided our awareness of HIV in the community. Michael Bolger has knowingly been living with HIV for 25 years. He offered to collaborate on the project for the second year in a row, sharing his story and participating at City Uprising. First and foremost, I am an ambassador, which we call a volunteer, as a person who is helping people get tested. We deal with outreach, we deal with just talking to people, especially if they're newly diagnosed. I didn't even have a remorse with the person because the girl actually told me she was sick but she never said what kind of sick but because I was chasing 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 I was chasing so bad I just had to have it so they did a spinal tap and that's how I found out that I was infected I didn't blow up I didn't curse her out I didn't I, I didn't even buckle I, I just said okay I just have to live life differently and that's what I did. Let me explain something that I found out, and I found out through jocks. What happened if I never knew I had it? And I just kept living, living, living. That's why I said it's best to know your status, then you know how to deal with your opposite sex, because now you know you can't do something if you don't protect yourself, you know what I mean? I mean, don't get me wrong, okay, for no reason. Do you want to take measures every day for the rest of your life? No. But do you have to? Yes. Yes. Well, like I told you, um, not you, I tell anybody. We had an uh, audition, and the audition was people listen, living well with HIV and AIDS, um, people who, who take their medicine well, people who willing to fight for other people to get help, 
to get service. Somebody said, Mike, oh, we know there's some new people. Or somebody, we need you to talk to so-and-so that's going through something. Or we need you to help somebody that's been newly done. And that's, that's part of my job, being an ambassador for the job, is to help the newly diagnosed people walk this walk. I call them baby brothers. People are just coming through jobs. I will pick them up by the hand, I guess you say, more or less carry them, walk with them. Call me if you need me. Don't wait till you did something stupid or think about doing something stupid. If we could save one person's life, it's a blessing because that one person can link to somebody else. That link, then we make a chain, and then we become, you know, and I really, I really like it, I really do, because it could be worse than this.